Hello friends, welcome back to a new lecture. So from this lecture, we will look at some methods of measuring the trend of a time series. Now there are many methods, but with respect to our syllabus, we will study four methods. That is, first one is graphical method, then second one is semi-average method, then third one is method of moving averages, and last one is method of least square. Now under this, we have two types, that is straight line method and parabolic curve method. So let's see each of these methods one by one. Now first one is graphical method or this is also known as freehand curve method. But friends please note I will explain all these methods with the help of examples so that it is easier for you to grasp the concept. And this is in fact the best way to understand all these methods. Rather than explaining theoretically I will straight away explain all these methods with the help of examples. Now friends, this graphical method is one of the easiest methods to analyze the trend of time series. So under this method, time series is plotted on a graph and, and then all the points are joined with a straight line. Here time as usual is represented on x axis and economic variable which is being analyzed is plotted on y axis. Finally, by taking care of fluctuations of the data, a suitable smooth curve is drawn from approximately middle of actual fluctuation. And this straight line in fact shows the long term secular trend. Now let's see an example and this will make the concept crystal clear. Now friends before moving ahead please note case studies play a very important role in clearing CIB. Most of one candidates who are stuck in this paper often fails to crack the case studies in their examination. Now if you haven't enrolled into my extensive ABM and BFM case studies courses then enroll it today itself as these courses may be the difference between your passing and failing in this important examination. The format of each lecture is that I first make you grasp the concept and then we solve various case studies in detail. So even if you haven't finished your textbooks, even then you can, even then you can easily join this course and grasp the concepts. All the links to join my ABM and BFM case studies classes are there in description to this video. So do join it today itself. Now friends, given here is the sales of a retail store for the last 6 years. Now these 6 years are given and the sales in crores are also given to you. And now based on all these sales, we have to find the trend. Now friends, the method is very simple. Just take time on x axis and sales on y axis and start plotting as we did in scatter diagram. So first for 2017, sales is 21 crores. Now this is represented by this dot. Then for 2018, sales is 23 crores, which is represented by this dot. Then for 2019, sales is 25 crores, and this is represented by this dot. Then for 2020, sales is 23 crores, which is represented by this dot. And then for 2021, sales is 26 crores, which is represented by this dot. And finally, for 2022, sales is 25 crores, and this is represented by this dot. Then friends, join all these points with a straight line like this. Now friends, please note this previously drawn curve is irregular as it includes short run oscillations. So these irregularities are smoothened out by drawing a freehand curve or a line along with the curve previously drawn. So let's do this for our example. So I will draw a straight line like this by keeping in mind that it runs almost through the middle of time series. As you can see, this curve eliminates the short run oscillations. And this would show the long period general tendency of the sales which is increasing in our data. I will again repeat while drawing this curve, please keep in mind that the curve should be smooth and the number of points above the trend line should be more or less equal to number of points below the trend line. Now friends, I hope this very important point is clear to you. I will summarize this methods in these steps. So in first step, plot the time series data on a graph. Then in second step, draw a freehand smooth curve joining the plotted points. Then examine the direction of the trend based on the plotted points. And finally draw a straight line which will pass close through the maximum number of points plotted. Now friends, before moving ahead, don't forget to get your CIB Masters Pack, which is a pack of 4 books. These first two are secret sauce books which are in fact summarized notes. And these last two are question banks of ABM and BFM respectively. You can also get individual books as per your needs. All the links are there in description to this video, so don't miss out on these. Friends, you can also get Retail Banking 1000 series which contains chapter-wise questions and detailed case studies. 
get your copies today itself by clicking the links in the description lastly always get updated editions since i update all these question banks after every 6 months that is after exams let's move forward with our lecture next let's let's see the merits of this method now as you can see this is a very simple attractive flexible and easy to understand method then next it takes less time to draw the curve then next this has no mathematical formula so it is easy to understand on the other hand demerits include that this curve is drawn by inspection therefore curves drawn by different people for same data can be different so friends i hope the graphical method is clear to you next friends let's do a case study that will make the things crystal clear and you will see how the questions can appear in your examination now given below is the annual sales data of a retail store for last 8 years now for all these years annual sales are given to you now answer next three questions based on data given and the first question is which of the following correctly represents the time series friends this question is very easy and no calculation is required here and these are the questions which iabf will focus upon in your examination so just look at the points and check which graph shows the points correctly now when you see the option c you you can notice that all the data points are correctly represented thus the correct option for this question is option c now i am not explaining this in detail as it's similar to what we did in example discussed the next question is which of the following represents best fit trend line now friends this is a very good question if you understood the method of drawing the trend line then you can easily answer this question without even doing any calculations so as you can notice that in option a the trend line is moving towards these upper points and far away from these lower points thus this trend line is not justified same is the case with option b this trend line is more closer towards lower points and lastly option d is also incorrect as trend line is not in the middle of points it's way outside all these points thus as you can see the correct option for the given question is option c since trend line is drawn judiciously almost in the middle and the trend line is almost equidistant from points above and points lower the trend line So friends I hope the question is clear to you. Friends finally we have reached the last question of our case study and the question is which of the following data points correctly shows the predicted sales figures for 2023 and these options are given to you. Now friends this is also a good question. So please note in practical scenario sales for 2023 can be anything. If again there is a lockdown then sales can be much lower. But while solving time series question we have to select that option that is most close to our trend line because that option will be as per our expected trend Now out of all the options you will notice that 50 is most close to our trend line while all other points are far away from this trend line Thus the correct option for the given question is option A Friends with this I hope the reasoning is clear to you and you can see you don't even need to do any calculation to solve this case study If you know the concept then this case study was a cake walk for you. So with this I wind up this lecture in next lecture we will see semi average method. So thank you and I will meet you again in next lecture.